Welcome to YouTube Excel finance trick number five. Hey, if you'd like to download this workbook and follow along, click on the YouTube, my YouTube channel, then click on the college website link and download the workbook Excel finance tricks one to 17. Hey, number five, we're on the PMT sheet tab and we're going to talk about our fourth example for PMT. This example is when you take out a loan and you don't have to make any payments for some period of time. So for us, we're going to borrow a million bucks. We don't have to make any payments for one year. How in the world would we calculate our period payment? Here we have our annual interest rate. We've already calculated our period interest rate. Our years, six. Hey, look, the periods per year, we have quarterly payments. So our number of compounding periods per year, four. Total periods, 24. That's a formula. You can see it's years times periods. This interest rate, that is annual rate, APR, divided by number of compounded periods per year. But how in the world do we get our period payment? Well, first, just use a little logic. Hey, here's our million bucks. We borrow it. They're not going to give it to us for free for a year. They're going to charge us interest. So we're going to use the future value function first to calculate what it will be, what we still owe, meaning the principal million bucks plus all the accumulated interest in one year. And then that will be our present value to make our PMT calculation. All right, equals FV, open parentheses. All the arguments in financial functions, you always got to have the right unit for each um, variable. For us, it's going to be quarterly, quarterly. And cash flow matters. So we always have to think which direction the cash is going. Rate, rate, rate. What is the rate? Oh, we have a period interest rate, a quarterly interest rate. And then we type a comma, NPER. It's not years, and it's not even um, periods per year. Now we have to be careful here. We have decided to put this payment off for one year. So we, for NPER, are going to have to make a calculation here. One year times the periods per year. Because this, it, we want to um, refer to this here, because if we put this off for two years, this formula would update. But now, NPER, it must be in quarters. So years times quarter will give us the total quarters, which is our NPER, comma. Now, we don't have any payments there. So to skip an argument, type a comma. And watch what happens to our screen tip, the bold will move to present value. Now, what is the present value? Ah, that's the million bucks. And we have to think about this from our point of view, because this is a cash flow. When we borrow the money, does that come into our pocket or out of our pocket? On the day we borrow it, it comes in. So it's a plus for us. So we're going to click there. And then type, we don't need to worry about that because we don't have a PMT. Close parentheses and enter. Hey, look at that. Why is that negative? Because these financial functions understand cash flow. You're right. If we were borrowing this at a million at the end, that's exactly how much we owe. So it's an as in essence as if it is a negative going back to the bank. If we were going to pay it off on that day, that's how much cash would be going out of our wallet. But now, we did our future value, so that's what this loan is worth in one year. Now we can do our PMT because one year later, we have to start making our payments. Equals PMT, open parentheses. Now the rate. It's got to be the period rate, comma, NPR. Oh, we're going to have to do another calculation here, because how many periods do we actually have? Now, I'm going to do uh, two uh, separate calculations. We need years times quarters. So for years, I'm going to say parentheses 6 minus 1. See how that works? That's years six years total on the contract minus the one year we didn't pay, because that's how many period years are left. And then once we get that years, close parentheses, times our periods per year. And that will give us the total number of periods. So in essence, it's 5, because 6 times minus 1 is 5. 5 times 4 is 20. Man, I'm surprised after all these years of doing Excel, I can even do math in my head. Comma, what is the present value? Now, here it is. This is an odd thing. When we did this future value uh, calculation, it really is negative, because that's how much we'd have to pay to the bank. But here we are. We're, we're in essence, borrowing it again for this function. So we're going to have to say minus this minus so that it's positive, because the cash flows matter 
in financial functions. So the present value when you take it along is coming into your pocket. Now, comma, we don't have any uh, future value balance left over, and we don't have any. Uh, we don't need to do type because the default is zero at the end of the period, which was what we're doing. So close parentheses and enter. You can see that function right there. If you were going to do it all in one function, here's a strategy for doing it. I'm going to click in this cell, F2. I'm going to actually copy this out. I mean, uh, highlight this right in there. Sometimes it's safer to come out here. And this is a cool little trick. When you copy from the formula bar, Control C, none of these relative cell references will move when I enter, 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 and paste it right here. Hey, that's just getting the same thing. But I want to hit F2 again. Notice. This green one right there in that cell is a function. So I want to see if I can uh, edit this formula, go copy this one and paste the results from that right there. Enter. Then I'm going to click in this cell, F2, to put it in edit mode. Very carefully, I'm going to scoop this out. I'm going to highlight just the function, Control C. I'm going to click Escape, because sometimes when you're editing a formula, it's dangerous. And if you don't want to change it, Escape. Then I'm going to come down here, F2, and I'm going to double click this C33 right there. Double clicking will highlight just the cell reference. And then Control V, and boom. There it is. Now you can uh, point, show you all your friends to hit F2 and go, yeah, no, I just typed that out. No, you don't. You want to show them the same trick I showed you there. All right, so that's how to use PMT for a couple different situations. Uh, all right, we'll see you next Excel Finance trick.